Hey, Link. All right. So guys, we're cruising away in The Alchemist right now. We're at about page 111. Oh, hey, Olivia. And what's happening is uh, Santiago, the shepherd boy, is like seeing things. He's reading omens, basically bird signs. And he thinks that the oasis is going to be attacked. So yesterday he visited uh, this like tent of chieftains and they're like the higher ups in the oasis. And a bunch of them are like, no, what are you talking about? We've been here for centuries, blah, blah, blah. Like no one's ever attacked us before. Everyone knows that there's no war in the oasis. And then like the, the big head honcho guy was like, maybe he's right. Um, and then there's this other guy, this like warrior that showed up and Santiago was like, oh, <laughs> there goes my life. Cause he kind of put his sword on the back of his neck and he was like, yeah, and that's the end of it. They don't agree with me. And um, this is, that's exactly where I left off. Um, the stranger seemed satisfied with the answer, but he kept the sword in his hand. What is a stranger doing in a strange land? I'm following my personal legend. It's not something you would understand. The stranger placed his sword in its scabbard and the boy relaxed. I had to test your courage, the stranger said. Courage is the quality most essential to understanding the language of the world. The boy was surprised. The stranger was speaking of things that very few people knew about. You must not let up, even after having come so far, he continued. You must love the desert, but never trust it completely, because the desert tests all men. It challenges every step and kills those who become distracted. What he said reminded the boy of the old king. If the warriors come here and your head is still on your shoulders at sunset, come and find me, said the stranger. The same hand that had brandished the sword now held a whip. The horse reared again, raising a cloud of dust. Where do you live? shouted the boy as the horseman rode away. The hand with the whip pointed to the south. The boy had met the alchemist. Wah! So cool. All right, page break. Here we go. Next morning, there were 2,000 armed men scattered throughout the palm trees at al -Fuyum. Before the sun had reached its high point, 500 tribesmen appeared on the horizon. The mounted troops entered the oasis from the north. It appeared to be a peaceful expedition, but they all carried arms hidden in their robes. When they reached the white tent at the center of al -Fuyum, they withdrew their scimitars. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up. And rifles. And they attacked an empty tent. The men of the oasis surrounded the horsemen from the desert, and within half an hour, all but one of the intruders were dead. That was the fastest action scene I've ever read. <laughs> nice. The children had been kept at the other side of a grove of palm trees and saw nothing of what had happened. The women had remained in their tents praying for the safekeeping of their husbands and saw nothing of the battle either. Were it not for the bodies there on the ground, it would have appeared to be a normal day at the oasis. The only tribesman spared was the commander of the battalion. That afternoon, he had brought before the tribal chieftains who asked him why he had violated the tradition. And tradition, you can't see it, but I can, is capitalized. The commander said that his men had been starving and thirsty, exhausted from many days of battle, and had decided to take the oasis so as to be able to return to the war. Oh, little geography lesson, right? That's why people use deserts as natural barriers, because it's impossible to survive. There's no food or water. <laughs> the tribal chieftain said that he felt sorry for the tribesmen, but that the tradition was sacred. He condemned the commander to death without honor. Rather than being killed by a blade or a bullet, he was hanged from a dead palm tree where his body twisted in the desert wind. Lovely. The tribal chieftain called for the boy and presented him with 50 pieces of gold. He repeated his story about Joseph of Egypt and asked the boy to become the counselor of the oasis. Your boy done good, kids. He got some money from that. Okay, another page break. When the sun had set and the first stars made their appearance, the boy started to walk to the south. He eventually sighted a single tent and a group of Arabs passing the boy, uh, passing by, told the boy that it was a place inhabited by genies. But, he, but the boy sat down and waited. Not until the moon was high did the alchemist ride into view. He carried two dead hawks over his shoulder. I am here, the boy said. You shouldn't be here, the alchemist answered. Or is it your personal legend that brings you here? With the wars between the tribes, it's impossible to cross the desert, so I have come here. The alchemist dismounted from his horse and signaled to the boy 
that the boy should enter the tent with him. It was a tent like many at the oasis. The boy looked around for the ovens and other apparatus used in alchemy, but saw none. There were only some books in a pile, a small cooking stove, and the carpets covered with mysterious designs. Sit down. We'll have something to drink and eat these hawks, said the alchemist. No, ew, that's gross. The boy suspected that they were the same hawks he had seen on the day before, but he said nothing. The alchemist lighted the fire and soon a delicious aroma filled the tent. It was better than the scent of the hookahs. Dead hawk, anyone? Ugh! All right. Why did you want to see me? The boy asked. Because of the omens, the alchemist answered. The wind told me you would be coming and that you would need help. It's not I the wind spoke about. It's the other foreigner, the Englishman. He's the one that's looking for you. He has other things to do first, but he's on the right track. He's begun to understand the desert. What about me? When a person really desires something, all the universe conspires to help that person realize his dream. Oh, that sounds familiar, a little too familiar. Hmm, said the alchemist, echoing the words of the old king. The boy understood. Another person was there to help him toward his personal legend. So if we think back to the hero's cycle and the hero's journey, time check, um, we're good. Um, one of the biggest pieces, I don't know if it had its own like spot on the cycle or the journey, but there's this idea of a mentor. And so far, um, Santiago the boy has had a couple. He's had the king, um, he's had the crystal merchant, kind of everyone in a way has helped him realize what his potential is and what the next step in his journey is. So the alchemist um, here is playing a role. So are you going to instruct me? No, you already know all that you need to know. I am only going to point you in the direction of your treasure. But there's a tribal war, the boy reiterate, reiterated. I know what's happening in the desert. I've already found my treasure. I have a camel, I have my money from the crystal shop, and I have 50 gold pieces. In my own country, I would be a rich man. But none of that is from the pyramids, said the alchemist. I also have Fatima. She is a treasure greater than anything else I have won. She wasn't found at the pyramids either. They ate in silence. The alchemist opened a bottle and poured a red liquid into the boy's cup. It was the most delicious wine he'd ever tasted. Isn't wine prohibited here? The boy asked. It's not what enters men's mouth. mouths that's evil, said the alchemist. <clears throat> it's what comes out of their mouths, that is. The alchemist was a bit daunting, but as the boy drank the wine, <laughs> he relaxed. Yes, Olivia, yes. After they finished eating, they sat outside the tent under a moon so brilliant that it made the stars pale. Drink and enjoy yourself, said the alchemist, noticing that the boy was feeling happier. Mm -hmm. Rest well tonight as if you were a warrior preparing for combat. Remember that wherever your heart is, there you will find your treasure. You've got to find the treasure so that everything you have learned along the way can make sense. Tomorrow, sell your camel and buy a horse. Camels are traitorous. They walk thousands of paces and never seem to tire. Then suddenly they kneel and die. But horses tire bit by bit. You always know how much you can ask of them. And when it is that, they are about to die. Good solid advice, just in case anyone was uh, wondering whether to buy a camel or a horse. Another page break. The following night, the boy appeared at the alchemist tent with a horse. The alchemist was ready, and he mounted his own steed and placed the falcon on his left shoulder. He said to the boy, show me where there is life out in the desert. Only those who can see such signs of life are able to find treasure. They began to ride out over the sands with the moon lighting their way. I don't know if I'll be able to find life in the desert, the boy thought. I don't know the desert that well yet. He wanted to say so to the alchemist, but he was afraid of the man. They reached the rocky place where the boy had seen the hawks in the sky, but now there was only silence and the wind. I don't know how to, found to, how to find life in the desert, the boy said. I know that there is life here, but I don't know where to look. Life attracts life, the alchemist answered. And then the boy understood. He loosened the reins on his horse, who galloped forward over the rocks and sand. The alchemist followed as the boy's horse ran for almost half an hour. They could no longer see the palms of the oasis, only the gigantic moon above them and its silver reflections from the stones of the desert. Suddenly, for no apparent reason, the boy's horse began to slow. There's life here, 
the boy said to the alchemist. I don't know the language of the desert, but my horse knows the language of life. They dismounted, and the alchemist said nothing, advancing slowly. They searched among the stones. The alchemist stopped abruptly and bent to the ground. There was a hole there among the stones. The alchemist put his hand into the hole and then his entire arm up to his shoulder. Something was moving there, and the alchemist's eyes, the boy could see only his eyes, <sighs> squinted with his effort. His arms seemed to be battling with whatever was in the hole. Then, with a motion that startled the boy, he withdrew his arm and leaped to his feet. In his hand, he grasped a snake by the tail. Oh, gosh, gross, gross, gross. The boy leapt as well, but away from the alchemist. The snake fought frantically, making hissing sounds that shattered the silence of the desert. It was a cobra whose venom could kill a person in minutes. Watch out for his venom, the boy said, but even though the alchemist had put his hand in the hole and had surely already been bitten, his expression was calm. The alchemist is 200 years old, the Englishman had told him. He must know how to deal with the snakes of the desert. The boy watched as his companion went to his horse and withdrew a scimitar. Still need to look that up. <laughs> with its blade, he drew a circle in the sand and then he placed the snake within it. The serpent relaxed immediately. Is this witchcraft? What sorcery is this? Alchemy, maybe? Hmm. Yes. Ian, thank you. Skymatar? Did I say it better that time? Yeah? Hopefully. Not to worry, said the alchemist. He won't leave the circle. You found life in the desert, the omen that I needed. But why was that so important? Because the pyramids are surrounded by the desert. The boy didn't want to talk about the pyramids. His heart was heavy and he had been melancholy since the previous night. To continue his search for the treasure meant that he had to abandon Fatima. I'm going to guide you across the desert, the alchemist said. I want to stay at the oasis, the boy answered. I found Fatima and as far as I'm concerned, she's worth more than treasure. Sorry, I have to stop there because I have conferences. So the boy is like, oh man, this guy, you know, finds a snake in a hole, starts doing some witchcraft. I'm out of here. I'm going back to the oasis. And the alchemist is like, oh no, you aren't. I'm taking you to the pyramids, boy, whether you like it or not. Oh dear. Sorry, too much coffee today. All right. Um, thanks for tuning in.